that you've been publishing it, do you think, are some of your most significant revelations? Are there some stories that even shocked you? Well, I think one of the uh, big stories that we were able to document in some detail was the, the, ra the whole scope of CIA activity, similar to what the CIA did in Chile, and which was documented by the Senate Select Committee, was the uh, whole covert action program in Jamaica in, uh, between 1976 and 1980. And we, were, we did a great deal of research into that, and we discovered uh, many, in many ways, a very similar program, almost a classic model that was followed along the lines as, uh, of what they did in Chile, uh, including three major categories, uh, military, paramilitary activity, uh, the use of propaganda in the, in the media, uh, and the third one, which was economic warfare, using uh, the multilateral organizations, the International Monetary Fund and others to withhold loans which had been promised to the Jamaican government. Uh, this is one example. So what are a couple uh, more of the details of that? You particularly, you mentioned those first two examples of actual paramilitary activity well, the CIA was involved in in Jamaica. There was a fire, for example, that took place uh, in Jamaica of an old people's home, uh, uh, I think 150 old and infirmed women, many of them blind were living in this home, and uh, as it turned out, the, the place burned down in the space of about eight minutes, seven or eight minutes. Um, it was discovered that the phone wires had been cut and that uh, the exits had all been blocked. Even those who could see their way out could not get out. Um, and uh, that the means by which the fire was set was the use of a petroleum jelly, which was unavailable in Jamaica. This was one indication, among others, that there was outside help. Uh, uh, why, the would the, this, why would yeah. the, the CIA, you might ask, why mm -hmm. would the CIA mm -hmm. want to uh, yeah. murder 150 old women? It was because it was an effort, part of a very large-scale effort, to discredit the government in Jamaica, which was at the time uh, uh, headed by Michael Manley, the Prime Minister. Uh, there were images produced of Michael Manley in the uh, media, in the Daily Gleaner, which was the newspaper which the United States, uh, through the CIA, helped to support. Uh, and there is a good deal of evidence of that. There were images of Michael Manley showing a death mask. I mean, it was his face which had been somehow made to look like a death mask, although it was pretending to be a, a, a photograph of him. Um, and there were many ways to try and discredit him. This is very, very similar, in fact, to what the CIA did to try and discredit uh, Salvador Allende in Chile. If you remember, uh, Richard Nixon instructed the CIA in a meeting, uh, which was in 1970, in the White House. And there was a, a document in the Senate com report, which is reprinted. And he said, make the economy scream. Those were his words. And that's, of course, what the CIA proceeded to do in Chile, and that's what uh, they also did in Jamaica. They also had furnished uh, a lot of munitions and assistance to the terrorist squads that were going around killing people in the, in the cities and also in the countryside in Jamaica as well. That's correct. Well, John, you had a trip down to Jamaica, and you saw a lot of these things about Jamaica with your own eyes, right? Yes, indeed. I, uh, a very moving, a very interesting trip to me to see uh, a target country at a time in the height of a CIA operation when I was completely outside. So there's no way that I could see. To see the problem that journalists have always had when the US government was targeting on a country in a situation, trying to destabilize it, overthrow, or manipulate the elections or whatever, of trying to figure out what's going on when you don't have access to all of the flow of cables and the discussions in National Security Council meetings and whatnot, or the planning. I observed that from published information, the CIA station there was quite large for that size of a country. It was huge, in fact. It was bigger than any station I knew of in Africa, although Jamaica was a fairly small island with two million people. That's typical of when the CIA has, has got a big operation going in a place. They beef up the station and beef up the offices back stateside. The tone and flow of uh, articles in the Gleaner was, of course, as Lou says, uh, definitely a chapter out of Chile or a chapter out of the Angolan operation. Uh, 
every indication of a massive CIA operation going to destabilize the government, to make the economy scream. And uh, in that case, I would say that uh, probably someone got promoted for that one, probably several people. Because Manley was run out of because office. Because it worked. By he a legitimate was, Yeah, without, without a scandal, without uh, an assassination, without uh, uh, the things that have caused the CIA so much grief, uh, uh, Manley, a champion of, of social democracy, of, of giving the people a piece of the pie, uh, was thrown out of office, and an arch-capitalist uh, was put in office. And, uh, and again, there was uh, minimal adverse publicity. Uh, Lou Wolf and the others were studying the situation and did publish about what was going on, but it was not published in the New York Times and the Washington Post and the big, uh, the, the big television networks didn't do studies on it. Primarily because even if the journalists uh, of the big organs knew what was happening and might have wanted to, uh, they really just, because of the secrecy, couldn't get the truth about what the United States was doing. Uh, one interesting thing was that uh, the effectiveness of the lies, the liars in our government, you know, the duplicity. When we formed the CIA, we committed our leaders to having two policies as loose as the rhetoric, the public statements, and the truth about what United States policy is. So an interesting measure of, of presidents is how effectively they lie. Interesting discussions that occur inside the CIA is about lying. Would, would you lie? You know, you're the DDO, and you're going to testify to the Senate. And serious discussions, are you going to lie? Because if you do, it's perjury, and there's a chance you could go to jail. And yet, you know, the organization expects you to lie. Uh, President Carter was one of the most effective liars I have ever watched on television and through the media. As a poker player, man, I would never go up against <laughs> that man. He could look at that camera and sta say things that obviously he knew were completely and totally false. And I would study his expression, and I could detect nothing except occasionally a little wisp of a smile that wasn't consistent with what he was saying, like he thought it was funny. But one of his more a classic tick, actually. It, well, the, the the smile that I was referring to wasn't that. It was just a kind of like he was repressing a grin, mm. like he thought it was funny. How he rationalized these things, I don't know. But one of his most uh, of conspicuous lies was when he sat down with Manley just a few weeks before the elections uh, in Washington and told him face to face that uh, the CIA don't have the CIA doing anything to destabilize you or your government. We have no such program going, when obviously he did. And uh, he, he pulled it off to the point where even Manley was troubled. Very effective lie. Uh, another major story that we, we uncovered was the whole range of uh, CIA media operations uh, throughout the world. We did an analysis of these operations and the use of uh, uh, money, a very large-scale money. It's thought between uh, uh, one-third and, and 40 percent of the CIA's budget. And I should say that that budget figure is the biggest secret that there mm -hmm. is in Washington today. Um, at that time, it was estimated that the 1978 budget was uh, in the range of one and a half billion dollars. Uh, a more recent estimate by a, a military journal, not uh, a liberal journal by any means, uh, estimated that the CIA's budget today is in the range of ten billion dollars. Uh, at any rate, uh, this analysis that we made of the CIA's media operations disclosed, among other things, that they deliver through uh, CIA couriers um, ready to print or ready to broadcast news, and I put that in inverted commas, uh, which is um, used by the media. Uh, and this is created uh, by the CIA. How often does the CIA manipulate the media in this way, plant stories, get their views in the media? Is this fairly common as a motive?